Welcome to PECOM, which is Phase Evidence Collection and Annotation Network. This is the first of several videos that introduce PECOM. First of all, we will go over an overview and then look at some basics about genomes. PECAN can answer several questions, one of which is to locate where genes are located on the genome. A second question is where the start sites for each gene, and then what the function of each gene is. Let's take a look at a phage genome, for example, the E. coli lambda phage. It has many genes here, which are shown as little boxes here. Let's take a look at three of them, C, D, and E. Uh, this is a diagram of the, the lambda phage. Inside is the DNA, outside is the protein coat. You see the green here are the, the E gene products, protein products. The blue are the D and the C are shown in yellow. There are many other genes associated with tails and spikes, etc. And these in the lambda phage are the structural genes that go into making up the protein coat. There are many other genes that are needed for lambda, some of which here are needed for DNA replication, the O and P genes. Um, others are needed for recombination. And finally, some of them are used for lysis that break open the cell and let the phage escape after it has made many copies of itself. So, the, the PECAN program lets you determine where genes are at, where they start, and can help you identify what the functions are. So genomes are made up of DNA. DNA is double-stranded. Uh, this shows uh, a forward strand on top, a reverse strand on the bottom. Notice that A's bind to T's and G's bind to C's. And these double-stranded DNA then can be copied into messenger RNA. Notice that the messenger RNA here has been copied from the bottom strand which is the template in this DNA. And it knows what bases to put in the messenger RNA because the T in the template strand here always binds to an A, so it puts an A into the messenger RNA. Whenever there is an A in a template, it always puts in a U in the messenger RNA uh, where T is found in the, the DNA. And so a messenger RNA is made. And from the messenger RNA, proteins can be made by incorporating amino acids for each of the triplet codons. Okay, so these this translation is done on ribosomes, which I will show you in a minute. Um, AUG here, these three bases then code for a methionine. The next three bases would code for an isoleucine, etc., etc., until we get to a termination codon, which doesn't code for an amino acid. Let me show you the ribosome here. So here is the messenger RNA. The question is, 
where on the messenger RNA do you start translating? Well, that is determined by a ribosomal binding site. Wherever there is a ribosomal binding site, ribosomes can come in and assemble on the messenger RNA to help begin translation at that point. The small ribosomal subunit contains RNA, which is complementary to this um, ribosomal binding site. And that's how the ribosome is able to line itself up. Adjacent to that is an AUG codon, which is a start codon, either AUG or GUG, and sometimes also UUGs may be used to start. A tRNA that recognizes the start site comes in and binds, and it has its respective methionine. And <clears throat> several recruiting um, subunits here, one, two, and three, these are initiators, are recruit in the large ribosomal subunit to complete the, the ribosome. And so on the completed ribosomal complex, the, there is a P site here, and that's where the initiating tRNA initially binds. Adjacent to that is an A site where new tRNAs can come in and bind and recognize the next triplet codon. So if this was an, an AAA, it would bind a UUU tRNA that had its respective amino acid. The ribosome then binds and takes this amino acid, connects it onto the amino acid of the tRNA at the A site, and then the, TR, the ribosome moves down the messenger RNA, going left to right here, and it would then put the, this tRNA with its two amino acids in the P site and open up the A site for another amino acid to come in. This is the process of translation, and this would continue until the A site contained a termination codon, which doesn't have a tRNA that recognizes it, and then that would then initiate a termination of transcription and release the peptide. So mess messenger RNAs then code for peptides through the that are made through the process of translation. The ribosomal binding site then, then defines the associated start codon, which is then the start of the protein coding part of the messenger RNA. The, T, the termination codon then, would, wherever it's at, would determine where the peptide stops. Okay, so the coding part of the, the, the gene is determined by the first AUG and the terminating um, codon. This ends the first part of the pecan tutorial. Stay tuned where we will then look at where genes are located on the genome uh, by beginning to find their closest relatives. Thank you very much for joining me.